In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can use constraints and expressions to make parametric models that dynamically update when parameters are changed. I'm going to create a new file, save it, give it a name, let's call mine hose adapter. We'll then switch to the part design workbench, choose the model tab. We'll create a body and add a sketch to the body. So we'll create this sketch on the XY plane. So for this sketch, I'm going to use the polyline tool to sketch um, half of a profile that can later be revolved. So I'm just very roughly drawing in a barbed end, a center section, not being careful how I position these things, just trying to get the rough shape I'll finish off by doing the other barbed end. I can right click to close the polyline tool or press escape. So now this awesome sketch needs tidying up and to do that we'll start adding some constraints. So I'll select any vertical edges that aren't currently, currently vertical and add a vertical constraint and then any horizontal edges do the same. And then we can start adding some basic dimensions. So we'll add an overall dimension to get the length. Let's round that to 65. We'll add a symmetrical constraint to the raised section to keep it neat about the vertical axis. And we can add a horizontal dimension there. So the line horizontal dimension, uh, we'll get up to 10 mil. Um, so with this done, I can start dragging around the sketch now to see what moves that shouldn't. Um, so we want to constrain this. We've got 14 degrees of freedom left. So the next thing I'm going to do is start looking at these barbed ends. So if I select these two nodes, and make them horizontal to keep them in line. The same here. Then I can add an angular constraint between these two edges. Yeah, it looks okay. I'll do the same on this side. Again, I'll just drag this round to see what moves that shouldn't. Okay, so we can can constrain the barbed ends by adding a horizontal dimension there. Five mil. Try again. So that's okay. So if we select these two edges and make those the same, looks better. And then we can tidy up the center of the sketch by adding a horizontal constraint. Oops. To these two points and the same here to keep those lined up that should hopefully stop the sketch self intersecting as the edges move up and down like we don't want this crossing over and uh, inverting the sketch so that will hopefully stop that so the next thing we can do is add a vertical constraint here to set the wall thickness uh, we'll make these two end edges the same, oops, try again. So I'll have a quick drag round, yeah, it looks okay. Um, we could fix these two edges the same. That will stop the sketch moving left to right. So we, we can only move up and down now. Um, we've got three degrees of freedom left. Um, I'm guessing one is the center section height. So if we Constrain that using a vertical constraint, and then the remaining ones, the remaining degrees of freedom, will be the height to each end. We'll add this on the top node to give us the outer radius. So we'll call that 12 mil, and I'll do the same on this side. We'll call it 8 mil. 
and that has constrained the sketch. So the sketch has gone green. It says we're fully constrained. We'll click close. At this point, we'll save it. And then we'll add the revolve. Choose the X axis to revolve around. Click OK. And then we'll fit the view and save. So we've now got a parametric model that we can revisit the sketch. We can change these dimensions. So we'll change that one to 10. We click close. And we can see the sketch is now, we can't actually see, but the sketch has actually resized uh, the model. Um, it's not the slickest of workflows, and we can improve that a little bit by um, doing a bit of work in the sketch. So if we go back into the sketch, we can actually name um, these dimensions. So if we give this one a name of um, radius one, and this end, unsurprisingly, we'll call radius two. Select OK, close. At this point, we'll just save. And then with the sketch selected, we should be able to expand the constraints uh, row in the data column. And we can see we've got radius one and radius two listed here. And by changing these values, we can see the model change. Um, so that's a really nice way of being able to modify the model without entering and exiting sketches. But we can then look at whether the sketch remains valid through a range of different sizes. So if I change radius 2 to 15 mil, yep, yeah, looks okay. Um, the outer dimension is getting very close to the size of our center section though. So if I change this to 20 millimeters, it's not changed. Uh, we've got an error message and we've got a warning next to the revolution. So if I enter the sketch again, we can see that although we tried to stop the sketch self-intersecting, it's actually done that when we later changed the dimensions. Um, so we, we can have a look at how we can stop that from happening. Uh, so I'm gonna change this back to something a bit smaller. And then we can see that this center section is dimension um, from the left hand side of the sketch based on the radius one dimension. Um, so that's not ideal because if radius two grows bigger, it doesn't account for that. But we can actually make this dimension account for whichever side is greater. Um, so to do that, I'm going to delete the current dimension and add a new one from the origin. And rather than typing in a dimension here, I'm going to click this function button, and this will let me enter a formula or an expression to control the value of this dimension. Um, so for this one, we're going to look at something called a conditional expression. Uh, the format for the conditional expression is the condition, an evaluation symbol, then a value if the condition is true, followed by a value if the condition is false. So we'll now replace these keywords with actual values from the sketch. So the condition we would like to evaluate is whether radius one is greater than radius two. If that's true, we want to use the value radius one. If it's false, we want to select the value from radius two. As you can see there, um, is radius one bigger than radius two? No, it's not. Radius one is 12 millimeters, radius two is 15. So it's false, so we're selecting the value from radius two, and this is the result. Um, so if we were to do that, in fact, I'll just accept that. Click OK. We can see that the dimension's gone orange to show it's a calculated expression. But because we're only ever uh, matching the largest dimension, this portion of the model will stay flat. 
and the original design intent was this to, this to be raised um, so it would have a shoulder for the hoses to push up against. Um, so to modify the, the dimension I'm going to click on it, choose the function button, I'm going to surround the expression in parentheses or brackets, oops, I'll then add an additional two and a half millimeters to whichever is the greatest dimension, radius one or radius two. So it's always two and a half millimeters bigger than the largest side. So with that done, I'm going to click OK, OK again. we we'll notice the orange dimension has increased and we're two and a half millimeters above this radius two dimension. Click close. I'll save and then we'll test it. So if I change this side to 15, radius one, that's okay, it doesn't change. So I change it to 60 millimeters. Yep, the center section's grown. And if I change this side to 17, yep, it's grown again with it. So it's it's always matching the greatest side and adding that two and a half mil extra to create the shoulder for the pipe to push up against. Okay, at this point, I'll just um, go to the top view, fit the model and save. At this point, we could consider the model done, but it might be nice to add a few extra little features such as changing the wall thickness. Um, at the moment, we don't have any control over that other than going into the sketch um, and changing it. So if we actually just go into the sketch, select our wall thickness dimension, we can we can give the dimension a name, select OK, close the sketch, and we can see that we've now got the wall thickness value um, easily accessible from the model space. So I can change that to five millimeters, back to two and a half, and we can see the model change. Um, so as a final step, I'd like to look at how we can use reference geometry to provide us with the internal dimension. We can do that by toggling the reference dimension button on the toolbar, and we'll notice that the dimensions have turned blue. So we can select these and add them as if they were normal dimensions. So I'm going to select the origin and the inner wall of the hose adapter, and that's given me a blue dimension there, showing it's a reference dimension mean it's it's driven by the model it, it doesn't actually constrain the model in any way if we look down uh, the constraints table we can see the constraint here and by right clicking on it we can rename it and call it i rad one for inner radius one and then we can do the same for radius two so we'll select the origin inner radius and then we'll rename the dimensions so it's easily accessible from the model space. With that done, I click close. So we can now see the values for the internal radius or radii are listed in the model space and by updating the wall thickness, they're also updated to match. With that done, I'm going to go to the plan view, I'll fit and save. So as a final step, we'll have a look at how we can use these values in other sketches. Um, to do that, I'm going to double click on the first sketch. I'll edit the dimension to the top of the center section by double clicking on it. And we'll give this a name. Um, call it center radius. And with that done, uh, with that done, we'll click OK close the sketch and save. And we can see the center radius listed in the constraint table in the model view. Uh, we can now go on to use that in another sketch to maybe add a, um, some flats to the center section to maybe help hold it in a vise or something similar while the hoses are being fitted. Um, so to do that, I'll click the body. We'll create a new sketch on the XY plane. Click OK. And then we'll just sketch a really basic square. So we'll keep this symmetrical about the vertical center line. 
make all the edges the same size by giving them an equality constraint. We'll switch back to the regular dimensions and add a, horizontal, a vertical dimension to one of the edges. So we'll just call this 20 to ensure that it's always bigger than the uh, horizontal length of the center section. And we can now position this um, square by selecting the bottom node, adding a vertical constraint. Again, instead of typing a dimension in, click on the function button and we can enter an expression to define the value of this dimension. And what we want to do is access, oops, sketch the previous sketch. We can choose the constraints and the constraint that we're interested in is the center radius. You can see that's populated the result with the current dimension and from that we can subtract two millimeters. So now I'll click OK. Click OK on the dimension form. That's positioned it. The sketch is green to show it's fully constrained. So we can click close and I'll save. And then we'll go ahead selecting sketch one. We'll create a pocket. We'll create it symmetric to the plane to make sure it always stays central to the hose adapter. So rather than typing in a dimension, we'll enter an expression. So this remains parametric with the rest of the model. So we'll access the sketch, choose the constraint from the sketch, and then we'll use the center radius value. We can multiply that by two. I'll click OK. You see the pocket's been created. So with that done, I'll click OK to accept. Save the model. And as a final step, we'll create a polar pattern to replicate the flat on the opposite side. So that done, we'll click OK. Switch to the isometric view. Fit the view and save. And there we have a parametric hose adapter. Um, so the key purpose of this tutorial is to introduce expressions that can be used in constraints to form relationships with other parts of the model. This allows reuse of components, parametric models, and more simplified updating of models. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. If there's anything you'd like to see in future tutorials, please drop a comment below. Thanks for watching.